Hello, um, I have a new show called, uh, Ryan's, uh, Goosebump Book Review. It's a segment <coughs> where I review, um, some of my favorite Goosebump books. For this week, I have reviewed Ghost, the, the Mystery of Ghost Beach. It's a it's a goosebump book by R. L. Stein, written by R. L. Stein, from nineteen uh, nine to nineteen ninety four. I will be aware that there is spoiler alerts in this show. I will read the back for you. Do you believe in ghosts? Jerry can't wait to explore the dark, spooky old cave he found down by the beach. Then the other kids tell him a story. A story about a ghost who lives deep inside the cave. A ghost who is 300 years old. A ghost who comes out when the moon is full. And a ghost who is haunting a beach. Just another stupid ghost story, right? This is what the back looks like. This is the book. I don't know who Mark Davis is, but it says his name in there. Um, so I will, t I will tell you about the plot. Jerry and Terry are brother and sister, and they go to a small New England town to spend a month with their cousins uh, um, in their cottage. And they are having a great time, and... and they're exploring the pine trees and the cemeteries and having fun. Um, his, his sister Terry is a little scientist who um, collects flowers and uh, does grave rubbings. And I don't really remember any what Jerry did, did much. He kind of just talked the whole time. But they are exploring and they find an old cave on the beach. Um... There isn't a picture of the cave, but I imagine it's over here. Over there. And that's the ghost. Right there. But then they find an old spooky cave. And then they meet three kids. Sam, um, Louisa, and Nat. And the kids are... Um, very scared of the ghost and they want to kill it and but no but the two their cousins they find out that they're cousins and they're on the beach and so they go back to the cottage and they try to ask the their cousins who they're staying with about the beach and the in the um cave but no one will tell them anything about it about the cave so then, um, one day they forget their beach towel, and they go, and they go, to, and Jerry goes to the cave, and sees a flickering light, and he goes, and, um, and, and, uh, he gets scared and runs back. And then another time, they do go in the cave, and, uh, they find out that, um, there's something, someone in there. But then Sam, Nat, and... Louisa don't are really scared and they want to throw rocks uh, in the cave entrance um, to uh, per, to stop the ghost. But if you haven't read the book yet, um, t please turn it off now because I'm going. This is a spoiler section, so it turns out that Sam, Nat, and Louisa are really ghosts. Because they, um, Jerry and Terry find their grave tombstones in, in the cemetery right there. The cemetery. And they go back and they ask, uh, their cousins that they're staying with about it. And they said, oh, well, there's, um, Sadlers everywhere around here. And, um, so, but they didn't know that they were ghosts until the end. And then, um... The guy, the guy who is supposed to be the ghost in the cave 
is really not a ghost, and he wants to get rid of the other ghosts. And then, um, at the very end, a dog comes barking and um, discovers that the cousins that they're staying with are ghosts. For the last segment of my review, oh, if I give this book two goose, goose, goosebumps, shivering goosebumps way up in the air. And then for my last segment of um, the review, I will read a random page from this book. This one. P page 63. All of them lighted. All of them flickered. So that explains, I whispered, flickering candlelights. It doesn't explain anything, Terry protested. Shadows dancing over her pale face. I never understood that. The, the, it says it a few times in, in, in this book. Shadows dancing and light and candles dancing in the light. How do they dance? I couldn't understand. Um, who put the candles here? We both saw the man at the same time. An old man with long, stringy white hair and a beak-like nose. He sat hunched over a crude table made of lo log driftwoods. Pale and terribly thin, he wore his shirt hung loosely on him. He sounds like my dad. His eyes were closed. Shadows played over him. What does that even mean? He seemed to flicker in and out with the candlelight, as if he were part of the light, part of the ghostly light. Terry and I froze staring at him. Did he see us? Was he alive? Was he a ghost? His eyes opened. Large, dark eyes sunk deep in their, so their so so sockets. He turned to us, stared back at us with those frightening, sunken eyes. Slowly, he curled a bony, gnarled finger. Come here. Uh, come here. His voice was dry. His voice was a dry whisper, dry as death. Come, come here, come here. And before we could move, he rose up from the chair and began to come for us. So I give this two shivering goosebumps way up. Uh, go get this at your local library. It's very good, and enjoy it. For the next Goosebump book review, I will I will read another one. I will do a review of another one. The next one is Egg Monsters from Mars. And it says on the cover, They're no yoke. This cover is really creepy, so I, I hope this one's just as creepy as the last. So, uh... I hope you enjoy 